tonight. Purple Pride, the Dockers' incredible comeback sends Frio fans into a finals frenzy. Teen thieves target cars, homes and threaten a woman at knife point. Baggage handlers to strike for 24 hours, how it'll impact your travel plans. Rates to hit a six-year high, plunging more Australians into poverty. And a sea of hugs as hundreds of dads dock just in time for Father's Day. This is Nine News Perth with Natalia Cooper. Good evening. The Dockers' dreams of claiming their first premiership are alive after a stunning turnaround victory in front of a record crowd. The elimination triumph over the Bulldogs, sending the Purple Army into a finals frenzy. The club and its fans now preparing to tackle competition giants Collingwood at the home of football. One of the greatest comebacks on turf. It's taken every ounce of the old heave-ho. But the Dockers have done it. Witnessed by 58,982 fans. The biggest ever Dockers crowd at home. Nudging Fremantle one step closer to an elusive premiership. Goalless until late in the second quarter, the Purple Army couldn't watch. Bontempelli goes for home. These dogs are delivering a deep purple hus. Trailing by as many as 41 points, the Dockers producing an incredible turnaround. Richards just got it away, but got it to Walters. Walters kicks a goal. And can you believe what is happening at Optus? Oh, it's pretty special. The win breaking a seven-year finals drought. <laughs> I know, did some kind of magic and look what happened. I didn't believe it until the siren went, but here we are and see you next week. The semi-final date with Collingwood now awaits the Dockers at the MCG on Saturday night. If they win, they'll face the Swans in Sydney for a place in the grand final. It's going to be a big challenge and one that we're, we're ready for. Three more to go. You've got this. We believe in you. If you're planning on crossing the country, the advice is to book now and fly early in the week. Previous to this game, um, airfares are extremely high and uh, as a result of the game, uh, higher demand, that's exacerbated it more that the airfares will be considerably higher. A direct return Qantas airfare flying to Melbourne between Friday and Sunday will start at $1,150. The cheapest flying Thursday, almost $1,300. The fair friendly Virgin prices flying direct are similar on Thursday and Friday. Cheaper charter planes could appear as early as tomorrow, but travel agents say major airlines are unlikely to add extra flights due to staff shortages. Aircraft demand, staff, um, you know, crew, uh, baggage handlers, you know, it becomes a bigger issue than just getting a plane. Retiring star David Mundy's 19-year career continues for at least one more game. Hopes high for a fairy tale finish with the writing on the ball. <laughs> it was an amazing game. Michael Stamp, Dockers fans can snap up semi-final tickets from tomorrow. Yes, and they need to set their alarms because they're on sale early, Natalia. Members are eligible for a pre-sale purchase period that opens at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Then at 1pm, the general public has its opportunity to snap up the remaining tickets. Members do require specific barcodes to buy seats and the club says there was a communication error this afternoon where personal information was sent to the wrong fans. Now a password will instead be emailed but the Dockers insist the mishap will not impact any ticket sales tomorrow. Natalia. OK Michael, thank you. A senior had a knife held to her throat in a terrifying teen rampage in our northeastern suburbs. Police say the gang was on a mission to break into cars and homes, forcing residents to barricade themselves inside. It's terrifying to hear, but what you can't see is worse. A man and elderly woman are barricaded inside a Maylands apartment as two 17-year-old boys allegedly try to smash their way in. I'm not picking up chairs, smashing glass, windows, screaming, shouting, carrying on. Um, one had a screwdriver and was jumping around. They're in a frenzy. 
This, the crescendo of a suburb-wide rampage last night. A woman's Riversley Avenue home in pieces after a trio of teens allegedly trying to steal cars turned violent about 10 o'clock, robbing this building's caretaker at knife point, forcing her to shelter here with a male resident. And they chased him and he'd run in there for cover. He reckons he would have, they would have killed him if he hadn't... If he hadn't had, had access to my unit. The elderly caretaker was first cornered on this staircase, one of the teenagers allegedly holding a small knife to her throat and demanding her car keys. Then chased to her hiding place. If you've just been robbed, you just hand your stuff over, but if you're being terrorised by crazy people, that, that's a whole different thing. Just an hour earlier, CCTV captures the trio on Kirkham Hill Terrace. The owner of this home forced to watch his security feed in horror from Port Hedland until the accused would-be thieves were spooked, running to a block of units where they tried to get into cars and a home. Eventually, detectives swooped in the city, arresting the group despite one fleeing into the Swan River. The youngest charged, a girl just 13 years old. It just shows you've got to be careful from even young people. Mia Edgerton Warburton, Nine News. The McGowan government has been called out for pressing pause on its yearly health worker survey. Doctors say the move is to avoid an avalanche of criticism, but the health minister says workers are too busy to give their feedback. Crying out for help in a crisis. We have health workers pleading uh, for their voices to be heard. The thin front line holding together WA's hospitals now apparently too busy for the state government to listen. WA Health delaying the annual Your Voice in Health survey until further notice. The McGowan government have suspended this survey because they didn't like the answers. Last year's survey indicated just 47% of health workers felt safe and supported. Health Minister Averjade Sanderson says it's because workers are extremely busy, raising participation concerns over the original timing of the poll coinciding with the surge of COVID cases. The suggestion that healthcare workers don't want to fill in or are too busy to fill in a five to ten minute questionnaire is, is based just rationalisation. This is more evidence of an effort to silence their feedback. The Australian Medical Association and opposition tonight calling on the McGowan government to reinstate its election promise. This is about them avoiding transparency and accountability. It is sensible for the government to ask its workers what's wrong, how to fix it and how do they feel about things. Zarisha Bradley, Nine News. Travel turbulence is looming as hundreds of baggage handlers prepare to go on strike. Kelly Haywood, WA travellers are being warned to brace. Natalia, they are 350 ground workers will walk off the job for 24 hours next Monday. They're demanding better pay and job security from their employer, Donata, which provides baggage handlers for several airlines, including Qantas. The strike is planned for airports in Sydney, Brisbane and Adelaide, affecting mainly international services, with a flow-on effect to domestic as they try to fill holes. And while Perth ground crews aren't going on strike yet, there are 61 flights in and out of the city that Monday that may experience delays or cancellations. Qantas, though, is insisting it has contingencies in place. Natalia? Kelly, thank you. A man is in Fiona Stanley Hospital after falling overboard in Fremantle Harbour just after 11 o'clock last night. Witnesses say the 68-year-old was in the water for about half an hour before being rescued by water police. Officers haven't revealed what caused the plunge or the man's injuries. He's in a serious but stable condition. Homeowners are bracing for a fresh hit with the Reserve Bank expected to hike the official cash rate above 2% for the first time in six years on Tuesday. The Greens want to pause in rate rises as the cost of living crisis drives families to charities in search of food. The shopping bags are getting lighter as the weight on Taylor's weekly budget gets heavier. Very expensive. Um, usually that would cost me what I just got, two bags, maybe like... $60, cost me close to 120 this time. Everywhere the story is the same. The price is more expensive than before. You've got a budget to be able to put food on your table, really. Some are being driven into poverty. We're doing over 10,000 meals a week 
over that, well over that. We're giving away hundreds, hundreds of food parcels. And inflation drives an even larger cost for homeowners. And the Reserve Bank's only got one weapon to fire at inflation, interest rates. The hammer will fall again this week. The Reserve Bank lifted the official cash rate from its historic low of 0.1% in May. It stepped up the pace in June, July and August. So it now stands at 1.85% and it's tipped to rise above 2% when the board meets on Tuesday. Economists expect another big jump. Another supersized increase, uh, probably half a percent. The Greens are crying foul. The RBA should press pause on interest rate rises at least until the October budget and put pressure on the government to provide significant, genuine, immediate cost of living relief. But pain is the point. The Reserve Bank's only going to stop when it hurts. Hurts enough uh, that we spend less than we're spending at the moment uh, and allowing inflation to come down from where it is. And that's not the end of it. The Morrison government cut the fuel tax levy in half in May, slicing 22 cents a litre off the cost of petrol. Unless the Albanese government extends it, that tax holiday will end on September 28. And with the GST included, the cost of fuel will jump 25 cents a litre. That's a huge amount. That's outrageous, isn't it? I got, you know, a kid to feed as well. Um, 23 cents a litre, you know, it's got to be fixed. At the moment, Labor's flying high in the polls, but the longer the cost of living pain endures, the harder governing will become. We've now confronted with the situation with, as you know, in recent times, wages are 3.5 per cent lower in real terms because of the inflation rate. The pain is real. I'd like to see the government making sure People do not go hungry, which they are. Parliament returns this week and the opposition will be on the attack on living costs and Labor's embrace of unions being allowed to strike wage deals with multiple employers. That will take this country back to the dark ages of the 70s and 80s. The government says its aim is to drive up wages. The breathless hysteria about uh, massive disputation happening because we use a new vehicle to bargain is not borne out by the facts. Chris Yorman, Nine News. WA state of emergency will end later this month, abolishing Mark McGowan's powers to close borders at will. The declaration, which was in force for more than 900 days, will be replaced by new legislation, which still allows police and health authorities to enforce rules such as mask wearing. WA recorded just 816 cases of COVID today. Thousands of Russians have lined up for hours to farewell the last of the Soviet leaders, Mikhail Gorbachev. The man whose radical reforms broke up the USSR was denied an official state funeral, instead buried next to his wife outside Kremlin walls. Mikhail Gorbachev denied the acclaim of a state funeral by Russian President Vladimir Putin, who despised him. It didn't stop thousands of ordinary Russians paying their respects to the last leader of the Soviet Union. We need such politicians, this woman said, to settle the situation in the world when it's on the verge of a third world war. Mikhail Gorbachev, famous for his policies of glasnost and perestroika, openness and economic restructuring. He had hope and a vision of, uh, of a future of peace and prosperity, which is why he won the Nobel Prize. But in his last years, Gorbachev had to witness his legacy unravel under Putin's dictatorship. The invasion of Ukraine was on the minds of mourners. Gorbachev would never let it happen, this woman said. Putin blamed Gorbachev for the collapse of the Soviet Union, calling it a catastrophe. While most Soviet leaders are honoured with a burial within Kremlin walls, Gorbachev was laid to rest in a cemetery outside. It should have attracted the heads of state and foreign dignitaries from around the world. But most were barred. Their response to the invasion of Ukraine marking them as unfriendly. A leader lauded in the West as a hero. But in Russia, a new regime trying to diminish his place in history. Mark Burroughs, Nine News.
A driver and passenger are dead after a Father's Day car racing tragedy in Victoria's northwest. A vehicle left the track, smashed into a tree and caught fire at the Rainbow Desert Enduro event around 9 o'clock this morning. Today was the final day of the off-road championship involving speeds of up to 200 kilometres an hour, with organisers deciding to abandon the event. Motorsport Australia and police are investigating. Four people have been rescued from a roller coaster at Movie World on the Gold Coast. They'd spent an hour and a half trapped, 10 metres in the air, on the Scooby Doo ride. It's believed a passenger took off a piece of clothing which became caught in the ride. No one was injured. There were long hugs and happy tears as 550 crew members of two Australian Navy ships set foot on dry land. It was an extra special moment for families this Father's Day, reunited after three months apart. Wave! Get that here, wave! <laughs> A glimpse of Commander Ian Hutchins, otherwise known as dad. I love him <laughs> and we missed him. It's hard without him and it's just amazing to see him again. An emotional homecoming. It is hard, yeah, especially when the kids are younger because it's much harder that concept of time. HMAS Canberra returned to Fleet Base East in Sydney following a three month regional presence deployment. The drawbridge came down, the crew welcomed this Father's Day. Oh, it's amazing. We've been counting down the days since we left. We really, really missed it. Wow. 400 people, an extra 150 on board HMA's supply. It's really, really amazing. And uh, yeah, to see this one, turn two while we're away, and uh, Chloe's now, yeah, five months. Three months at sea, the ships took part in Rim of the Pacific in Hawaii. The world's largest maritime warfare exercise. It's great to be away, of course, doing our job, but there's nothing like coming back to home shores, uh, particularly on a special day like Father's Day and having so many families and friends of the ship. Peter's son welcoming home his daughter, Natalie. Very proud of her. Proud of all the kids. The kids have been in the forces, still serving. The crew on board will now have a well-deserved two-week break as maintenance gets underway on HMAS Canberra service to the country but always good to be back. I can't even explain the emotion. I miss him so much. And he's grown a bit. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to finish a deployment and be able to see family on the wharf. Really, really makes me feel warm in the heart, you know. Vicky Jardim, Nine News. Oh, that was lovely. Time to check in with Sherry Lee Biggs for the weather. A showery end to Father's Day, Sherry, and there's more to come this week. Natalia, spring, what can I say? It gives us those warm, sunny days and then dishes out a run of rainy ones as well as we slowly transition into the warmer months. Now, just a few light showers is moving through the city. It did so this afternoon and this evening, and at most, we've seen around two millimetres at Perth Airport. It didn't seem to affect the day's temperature, though. The mercury peaking at 20. 20.4 degrees quite late this afternoon. A cold front, however, is reaching Perth in the early hours of tomorrow morning. It should team up with a trough with a fair bit of rain attached to it and maybe bring a storm our way. So some chilly days is on the cards as well, Nat. The mercury won't get above 20 until this weekend. So I'll have those forecast details coming up soon. Thanks so much. See you then. Next, the alarming number of Australians suffering heart attacks without realising. Plus, what $25 million looks like up in flames. Rampage in the sky, an airport worker steals a plane. And strike two, why NASA's moon mission was aborted again. And later, the new trend turning classic cars into electric so they can be driven forever. An alarming number of patients are suffering heart attacks without realising. A Sydney clinic found almost half of the 106 patients studied did not call an ambulance because they believed they were a low chance of suffering a heart attack. Risk factors include a family history, high blood pressure and cholesterol, diabetes and smoking. It's prompted calls for more education around heart health, particularly for young men. A heritage mansion made famous for its record-breaking price tag has been destroyed by fire just months after being sold. The waterfront property hosted celebrities for years, friends with the well-known family who lived inside. This is horrendous. Oh my God. 
embers rained down across the neighbourhood around 11 last night. Oh, I just said send a lot of trucks because it's a, it's a big house. They obliged. 50 firefighters came, but there was little they could do. There were flames leaping 20 metres into the air. Two hours later, the fire is out, but the home is lost. Today, investigators stepped in. And they'll meticulously sift through that rubble to determine why the fire started. Set on an acre block, the heritage home featured six bedrooms, four bathrooms and 47 metres of water frontage. The property recently went on the market, snapped up by the next door neighbour, fund manager Owen Shen. When Mr Shen bought this place last year, he set a record for the most expensive home ever sold in the area, an eye-watering $25 million. And with a full-size tennis court and city views, it's not hard to see why. Built in 1915, it was the Rossi family who called it home for 60 years. The late Mary Rossi, a famous TV presenter turned travel agent mogul. Good afternoon and welcome to this edition of Woman's World. The 1975 Mother of the Year, perhaps even more well known for raising 10 children there. Younger siblings Alexandra and Emma were there last night brought to tears as they watched a lifetime of memories reduced to rubble. James Wilson, Nine News. An airport worker has been charged with stealing an aircraft and threatening to smash it into a supermarket. Terrified residents filmed the hijacked plane doing laps overhead before it crash landed in a field. In the skies over Tupelo, Mississippi, a twin engine aircraft caught the eyes and ears of residents. Far from a joy flight, the unlicensed pilot, Corey Patterson, stole the plane from the local airport where he worked. At approximately 5.23 a.m., Patterson from the aircraft calls 911 to tell them that he is going to crash this aircraft into the West Main Walmart in Tupelo, Mississippi. The Walmart and surrounding streets were evacuated, residents warned to take shelter as the aircraft flew around for hours, loop after loop, until it was almost out of fuel. The pilot posting on Facebook mid-air. Sorry, everyone, never actually wanted to hurt anyone. I love my parents and sister. This isn't your fault. Goodbye. Shortly after, negotiators convinced him to land safely in a field where authorities were waiting. The suspect is now in custody. He will get the help he needs. He is being charged with grand larceny and making terroristic threats. We do anticipate federal charges in the very near future. No one was injured, the aircraft intact and the motive still unclear. In the United States, Amelia Adams, Nine News. NASA has been forced to scrap the Artemis 1 test flight for the second time in less than a week. Crews found a liquid hydrogen leak as they were fueling the rocket, which was due to take off from Cape Canaveral on an unmanned mission to orbit the moon. We're going to stress this and test it uh, and test that heat shield uh, and make sure it's right before we put four humans up on the top of it. The next launch window will now be at the end of September or early October. Next on Nine, Stranger Danger, parents warned of the new way predators are targeting children online. Plus, a massive wildfire engulfs an entire neighbourhood. Donald Trump's newest tirade calling Joe Biden an enemy of the state. And a retired newsreader grabs the mic when the national anthem doesn't play. Parents are being warned about the new ways online predators are finding young victims. Police have adapted to the growing threat, with the community invited to help hunt down the internet groomers. Long before the digital age, stranger danger was drilled into children. Don't accept rides from strangers. The threats were commonly depicted as dodgy blokes on park benches. Times have changed. The threat is actually in the computer. Officers from the joint anti-child exploitation team say pedophiles now mostly lurk online, anonymously using platforms and apps popular with children to get in touch with kids. 
if they can have more of a scattergun approach, send out a message to thousands of children with, with the push of one button, and it becomes a, a statistical game then of how many children reply. We're seeing children as young as six, seven and nine recently that have actually produced sexualised material themselves and uploaded that material onto the internet. The online abuse can happen fast and right under parents' noses. While they're sitting on couches, on devices, and then they take it off to the privacy of their own rooms. Where we're actually seeing examples now of grooming taking place uh, within minutes. The Victoria Police Unit starts its abuse investigations by identifying victims whose images are being shared online. If we find a victim, that will typically lead to the offender. The community can also assist in finding these creeps. The Australian Centre to Counter Child Exploitation posts images of objects found in the background of sexual abuse material involving children. Anyone who recognises the objects, such as this cushion, can contact police. For tips on how to protect children, a good place to start is the eSafety Commissioner's Facebook page. To help your children protect themselves while using their devices, Warn them not to communicate with strangers online and always encourage them to be able to talk to you about anything. Emily Rice, Nine News. A wildfire fuelled by extreme heat and wind has burnt an entire neighbourhood in Northern California. The blaze started at a mill, spreading to 100 homes in the local rural community. 4,000 people have been ordered to leave the area. Donald Trump has unleashed on Joe Biden during a rally in Pennsylvania. He accused the president of the most shocking abuses of power in American history following the Mar-a-Lago raid. The travesty of justice. that made a mockery of America's laws, traditions, and principles before the entire world. The entire world was watching, and they're shocked. He also called Joe Biden an enemy of the state after the president called Trump supporters a grave threat to democracy. Foo Fighters frontman Dave Grohl has broken down on stage at a tribute concert for good friend and bandmate Taylor Hawkins. The drummer was found dead in a Colombian hotel in March. It's times like these you give and get. Liam Gallagher opened the concert, which saw a string of big stars on stage, including Paul McCartney, Metallica's Lars Ulrich and ACDC's Brian Johnson. A man has lost his lawsuit against band Nirvana after being pictured as a baby on the cover of the 1991 album Nevermind. The 31-year-old had tried to argue the naked picture was child pornography. A judge in Los Angeles said he waited too long to claim that he was sexually exploited, taking legal action more than 10 years after he made the discovery. A retired newsreader has saved the day, leaping into action when the national anthem failed to play at a football match. Without hesitation, Peter G grabbed the mic and started singing, a performance that's made him an online hit. A grand occasion in Tasmania, but on footy's biggest day, things can still go wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we're having a little bit of trouble with the national anthem. With the music track not playing, standing MC Peter G sensed trouble. I could see our technician up there running around like a chook with his head cut off and I thought, nah, the players are getting restless, we've got to get this done. The former ABC newsreader with no other option but to take matters into his own hands. This is exciting. Australians, I don't think I'm gonna do this before. all let us rejoice for In fact, G barely missed a beat. Our home is got by sea. And the players loved it. In Not surprisingly, that clip has started getting plenty of likes on social media. I didn't set out to become an internet sensation, I can tell you. It was just, let get, let's get the game underway. What's the quickest way to do it? But this could be a one-hit wonder. That is, unless Gil McLaughlin comes calling. If anyone can advise me what I should ask in terms of a fee, then uh, we might negotiate. Voice of the G. That actually has a nice ring to it. Clint Stanaway, Nine News. 
Good on you, Peter. Ahead, electric revolution, the rush to convert classic cars as the cost of fuel skyrockets. Plus, a wall of dust swallows homes. But first, here's Paddy Sweeney with Sport. And Paddy, this is a different Dockers. They're made of the right stuff, aren't they, Natalia? The comeback victory over the Bulldogs, one of the greatest in club history. Pride and passion, Fremantle prime to swoop the magpies. Sore or sound, another star pie in pain. And Kyrgios doubles down, taking aim across the net. Dockers coach Justin Longmuir says no challenge is too great for his young side ahead of their semi-final clash against the Magpies. Fremantle's brilliant comeback victory over the Bulldogs sparking belief anything is possible. Dead and buried down 41 points, this is the new Dockers. Walters kicks a goal and can you believe what is happening at Optus? To do what we did tonight, it takes a lot of belief. Takes a fair bit of guts, really. The club's greatest comeback on home turf, setting up an MCG meeting with the Pies. It's going to be a big challenge and one that we're, we're ready for. In front of a record home crowd of almost 59,000 fans, the dog skipper hitting the silencer. Bontempelli found some space, took the mark, loaded up. Oh, the bot strikes early! The Purple Army's worst fears coming true. The young team stunned the visitors with six unanswered goals. Second gamer, Jai Amos, feeling the pressure. He can't handle the moment. Frio's first goal coming 20 minutes into the second. The climb back starts now. The tide shifting, Caleb Sarong rising to the finals arena. Can he find that left boot of his and kick the goal? Yes, sir! Amos starting to relish the moment. The dogs biting back to start the third. Rory Lobb stepping up with two goals. Michael Walters and his desperation doing the damage. Might want to give them a fighting chance. A second to the teenager levelling the scores. Hoist it high and long and straight enough. The Dockers' defence impenetrable. Flying in was Pierce who just wanted the ball more. A brain fade gifting them the lead. 50. to complete the extraordinary comeback. The Dogs rising one last time. Long up goes Rock Smith! Nathan O'Driscoll sending them home. This would mean so much to his football club. The fast finishing Frio with 11 goals to two and ready to go up another notch. We've got um, 23 players with finals experience now, so they should be able to handle it. Nat Fife already ruled out of the clash. Matthew Taberner with two majors for Peel. Forward positions hard to find. Joe played well, so I'm not sure his spot's up for grabs. Darcy Tucker suffering a knee injury, awaiting scan results. Mitch Turner, Nine News. And Collingwood has fresh injury concerns ahead of the semi-final with Fremantle. Star Jordan Degoe undergoing scans. It comes with midfielder Taylor Adams already ruled out with yet another groin injury. The pressure is mounting on the pies, more specifically Jordan Degoe's shoulder. The midfielder remaining tight-lipped at scans this morning. How are you feeling, Jordy? What's the, uh, what's what the issue, mate? Collingwood already without one of their best. And Taylor Adams is down behind play. We know that he's had groin issues and that is not a good sight. Looks like Day has done. He's, um, looks like he might have... Um, tore the groin off the bone. Back to business for the Demons and Christian Petrarca following a painful loss to the Swans. Yeah, it's a little bit sore, but I mean, I can't really control it. It's obviously a hairline fracture, but um, yeah, we'll see how we go. The, the, the docs have uh, sort of allowed me to try and play this week to get up. First, reducing the swelling from a corked calf, then a fitness fight in a week of rehab. Oh, I've been sitting in, the, in, my, in my pool at home for the last six hours, so I um, oh, just get it moving, just recovery. Um, ice baths and um, so some spin bike stuff. Weighing up a risk of making the problem bigger or underperforming in next weekend's semi-final against the Lions. Yeah, I'm not too sure yet. Um, I actually asked the docs today about that. Um, but I don't think there's any concern. I've got full faith and trust in the doctors. Alexia Pescher, Nine News. So the AFL's semi-finals fixtures are locked in. Melbourne's Premiership defence goes on the line when hosting Brisbane on Friday night, the winner to play Geelong. Then it's the Dockers' turn on Saturday night. Fremantle stepping out onto the MCG against Collingwood for a shot at Sydney in a preliminary final. The Eagles' AFLW side have suffered their first loss of the season, thrashed by Gold Coast by 33 points. 
The Eagles going goalless in the opening three quarters. The Suns with the first six goals. Look, Drennan. Reward for effort. She's been everywhere this afternoon. West Coast, only two goals coming late in the game. Peel Thunder is returning to Waffle Finals for the first time since their 2017 Premiership. Aided by 15 Dockers, Peel in control from the outset. The game over at the main break on the back of a 12 goal to two first half. Into the hands of Warner, who got it from Matthews and makes it 11, an eight goal quarter. Sam Sturt with four goals in the 92-point victory, setting up an elimination final against South Fremantle on Sunday. He's preparing for a single showdown with world number one Daniil Medvedev, but Nick Kyrgios says winning the US Open doubles title with Thanasi Kokonakis is just a bigger priority. The special case reaching the round of 16 after a heated straight sets victory. These doubles guys, I think, kind of forget you know, their place on the court. Like, Guys like me and Thanasi playing doubles, you know, bring the crowds and essentially more money for them. Rafael Nadal is into the fourth round along with women's world number one, Iga Svontek, both winning in straight sets. And Daniel Ricciardo's horror season has gone from bad to worse at the Dutch Grand Prix. Any hope of a bold showing for the West Australian ending following a wretched run in qualifying? After another week to forget, this was simply cruel. But we ought to say, what a disappointing performance there from Daniel Ricciardo. I thought he was on for a good one this weekend. Ricciardo failed to get out of Q1, and not for the first time, he says it all came down to luck, or a lack of it. Coming up to the last corner, it was dirt everywhere, so I lost uh, I lost about three tenths there, so that was, the, that was the difference. The Dutch fans going wild as hometown hero Max Verstappen locked down pole. It's working enough to put Verstappen on pole. The Premier League's Merseyside derby had a bit of everything. Deflector, brilliant save from Allison. Everything except a goal, a scoreless draw between Everton and Liverpool, while in London, West Ham fans were enraged after what appeared to be the leveller was scratched. Is he going to stick with his original decision? No, it's a free kick to Chelsea. And for Ange Postacoglu, more celebrating as Celtic trounced Rangers in the old firm derby. And a after just six games, Ange's side is already five points clear at the top of the Scottish Premiership. Cam Smith nailed the shot of the day at the Live Tournament in Boston. Oh, what a shot! <laughs> An eagle on the 18th, but he's still five shots off the leaders. Another forgettable performance from the Wallabies, a 24-8 loss to the Springboks, ending in a brawl. And they get fired and tangled up at and party time for Jack Miller, who secured his first pole position in four years at the San Marino MotoGP. Clint Stanaway, Nine News. Big end to a big weekend, Natalia. Fremantle. Let's hope they can do it again next Collingwood next weekend. Yes, so good, Patty. Thank you. Next, electric vehicle movement. The company's capitalising on classic car upgrades. Plus a sneak peek at Australia Post's newest collectibles. And Sherry Lee Biggs has your weather details. We could wake up to a storm tomorrow. Natalia, maybe a roll of thunder early on, but a cold front will see showers increasing across the day with more to come. I'll have your seven-day forecast coming up soon. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the biggest headlines making news in Perth this evening. The Dockers come from behind victory over the Bulldogs has sent Frio fans into a finals frenzy. Teen thieves have targeted cars, homes and threatened a senior at knife point in a Maylands rampage. Travellers are being warned to brace for flight delays next Monday as hundreds of baggage handlers walk off the job for 24 hours. And there have been emotional reunions on Father's Day as Navy crews returned from Monday months at sea. No rumble from the tailpipe, no smell of gasoline. Decades old classic cars are working a little differently in California. A business is converting old VWs and Porsches into electric vehicles and once they're upgraded it's hoped they can be driven for life. Just have a listen. What you're not hearing is that familiar rattle of the old VW Beetle engine. And that's because Mark Wagner, like a lot of people here in America, decided electric is the way to go. I actually went and found this car for the express purpose of converting it. It would be my forever car. EV West in California did the conversion, one of few places converting classic cars to electric. Although you do have to be patient. So many people want to turn their old car now into an EV, 
Here, there's a five-year waiting list. Business is booming, right? I mean, there's such an interest right now. And these days, for just about every conversion they do here, they rely on an abundance of motors and batteries from Tesla. So where do you go to get the Tesla batteries and motors to make all this happen? Well, for a start, Elon Musk isn't going to sell you any. Instead, they go to all the smash repairers, and there they find written off Teslas and everything they need. I would imagine there's a bit of competition to get a wrecked Tesla these yeah, days. Yeah, there's a bit of competition, even on the, the wrecked ones. But I think that we've kind of perfected the process. We're very efficient with it. And we're conscious. We make sure that the bits that we don't use go to the proper resources so that they can be used in repairing Teslas that are on the road now or the materials can be recycled for manufacturing in the future. Michael Bream is the master converter. Whether it's a BMW, an old VW Combi, or a classic Porsche, He's done them all. The actual fact remains that our hydrocarbon fuels are finite, and at some point we're going to run out of them. So we might as well start planning now, especially if we have all the power, all the fun of the cars that we're building. And talking of fun cars, skateboarding legend Tony Hawk just had his 1964 Corvette Stingray converted. Yeah. It takes off. It takes <laughs> off, right? <laughs> right. More so than you could ever do in an original Corvette. Right. <laughs> I think they're just saying, I didn't hear anything, yeah. why not? <laughs> like, that doesn't sound like a Corvette, it looks like one. And just because he can, Michael built this Tesla-powered racer and took it to the Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah. And just like that, he hit 390 kilometers per hour. The data that we gathered, we use that to build better cars today and engineer better solutions for the customers that we have that aren't going to Bonneville. With no power out there, there was, of course, the sun. And solar panels charged the batteries. So we're really getting land speed records based on sunshine. With petrol prices here, like Australia, skyrocketing, the savings are obvious. Although converting these old cars is costly, on average about $70,000. But then after the conversion, it's mainly a matter of keeping the vintage parts of these cars just in working order. And it can indeed then become your forever car. And that electric motor. It's got a lot of power, especially compared to an ordinary 62 Beetle. Plus, you still get the, uh, the stock Beetle experience in this car. In Los Angeles, Robert Penfold, 9 News. Stretching two kilometres into the sky and 80 kilometres across the ground, this is an enormous dust storm rolling over Arizona. This time lapse shows the rust coloured wall as it rises to smother trees and homes. 7,000 properties were left without power. Australia Post is teaming up with the Royal Mint for Stamp Collection Month, offering children a visual history lesson on the prehistoric era. A series of stamps and coins have been released, each one emblazoned with images of Australian dinosaurs. This year's theme is inspired by the discovery of sauropod fossils in outback Queensland. Stay with us. Sherry Lee Biggs is back with all of your weather details right after this break. Welcome back and happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. It did grey over today and there are a few showers about this evening and we are expecting more of that this week but it was still fairly warm out there. The mercury hitting 20 degrees late this afternoon. The cloud cover is keeping it mild tonight so it's currently hovering around 17 degrees. A cold front is set to sweep in overnight and it's joining forces with this trough over here so we could see storms across the southwest of the state including Perth. The heaviest rain though will hit the southeast of WA with falls between 15 and 25 millimetres possible and it's great news for farmers that way. But if we take a look at the national forecast now, Sydney is expecting a coastal shower tomorrow, otherwise partly cloudy and heading for a top of 18 degrees. Melbourne is staying dry with a top of 15. Hobart expecting showers and a chilly top of just 12 degrees. Tracking back home to WA now and the rain has eased off through the north of the state, so no further flooding 
flooding is expected in southern Pilbara and Gascoyne River catchments. Just a possible shower for those in Carnarvon and looking at a top of 22 degrees. Looking south now and showers are increasing across the day in Margaret River and Augusta. Heading for a top of 16 degrees but Geraldton could see just 4 millimetres of rain. Maybe a roll of thunder and heading for a top of 18 degrees. A quick check of coastals now around Perth and it'll be pretty gusty out on local waters. A southwesterly is picking up to 25 knots late morning and we'll see swell picking up as well to around 3 metres. It'll be much warmer to start tomorrow thanks to all that cloud cover. It's only getting down to 13 degrees for our coastal suburbs and there is the slight chance of an early thunderstorm around Perth with showers increasing across the day. It could add up to 8 millimetres to the city gauge and heading for a top of 18 degrees but feeling a few degrees cooler at the time. Now Tuesday will be our wettest day of the week with a potential 15 millimetres set to land in the gauge. Scattered showers are forecast for the rest of the working week but it will be clearing up just in time for the weekend. How good is that? Looking at a top of 20 degrees on Saturday and even a lovely warm 23 degrees on Sunday. Now Matt, there is the spring weather that we've been waiting for but it's good that we're getting a bit, a bit of rain out the way too. Yeah, bring on that sunshine next weekend, Sherry. Thank you. And that is Nine News this Sunday. Thank you for your company. From the team here at Nine, enjoy your evening. Good night.